what did we want? We, we started out um, get, getting into this whole process partly because I'd heard the word, for me personally, I'd heard the word inquiry, um, but wasn't really clear on how to make it work. Tried once or twice and maybe it didn't go so well. Um, we knew that we wanted to increase the intrinsic motivation of our students. We wanted to increase collaboration and regulation. Um, we wanted the students to be part of it and to take their own action. We wanted to increase empathy, compassion. We knew, we knew we wanted to do all these things, but we're kind of struggling with how do we put that all together. So, the big picture is the one you see on the board. So last night, we are like, okay, what did, why did this work so well? And what was our big picture? You know, and because this was our inquiry project, and our inquiry project was how might we be better at using inquiry? in our classroom because you go to these workshops and you're like, oh, how am I gonna do all this? And we thought, okay, let's make this, let's do it right. Or let's try to, anyways. So we really could only come up with this whole big picture after we had been through the process because that is really what inquiry may, may do. So what we decided and we discovered is, you know what, man, we gotta go out in the community. We have Google, we have RIM, we have Communitech, we have, um, oh, what just happened? Oh, oh you're right. We have, huge companies in this town. Uh, so we went to Communitech. Has anyone, hands up if you've heard of Communitech? All right, anyone been to Communitech? Okay. Um, Future Design School, anyone heard of Future Design School? Uh, Catalyst 137, it's brand new, it's not even built yet. Um, what they're doing is they're coming together and uh, it's just a blank slate, but you know the site, but the uh, tire, big old unilateral tire place. It's gonna be a big learning hub of all the people who are doing manufactured based stuff for RIM, for Communitech, for all those. And so we went there to see what they're doing, what the future's like. Uh, Knowledge Hook, anyone heard of Knowledge Hook? It's a mathematics new math program. And your code. So we exposed ourselves to all of those things thinking, okay, we want these kids to be ready for a real future. We want them to be asking critical thinking questions. We want them to be going out and solving real world problems and have them, as Dayon said this morning, he goes, yeah, we need to be the innovators, not the people just working for them. And that was from, from him, what he was saying. So, yeah. uh, so we knew we wanted it to be student driven, and we also knew we had to keep the curriculum in mind as a guide to what we were doing. So we started using the inquiry process in geography through our sustainability unit, and we also both do something called Genius Hour. Um, and those two things fit in obviously with geography, with reading, writing, uh, media, oral communication, collaboration for learning skills. Here's one quick possible connection from the geography uh, curriculum for what we did in the sustainability portion. Is anyone ever worried about if I do inquiry, how do I assess it? Sort of, that's what we've had a lot of feedback on at our own staff meeting and sharing this. They're like, yeah, but how do I assess that? Well, there's a, a million and one ways to do it. It's, it's, Amazing. We just did it backwards, and that was a better discovery for us because that was our inquiry journey. Um, so what we realized that it has to be student driven, right? So these guys have passion and interests that of our own that I don't know. So it had to be student driven, and then we had for us we had to go okay where can we connect this to the curriculum? So we realized that um, they had to go through user discovery, and this is with. Future Design School. Future Design School, we use their process. Future Design School is a school in Toronto that um, we met with Communitech, and then they took us on as a pilot school. Are you, are you guys up one of the pilot schools as well? No? Okay. They took us on as a pilot school to run their program to see if it would work. Because we didn't know how to use the inquiry in a creative way, and they gave us a strategy, because that's what they do, they're strategists. So thinking about our sustainability um, project in particular, or not, we, we're trying to get away from using project because that's not, that's not the goal, is having a nice end project, it's the process. So using sustainability as our theme, we had the kids uh, first think about user discovery. Who are their stakeholders or their users? Um, what questions do they need to ask? What are the barriers? What problem do they really want to solve? We use the problem of sustainable schools. How might we create a school that is more sustainable? And Ava, what was your question? How might I create it? Um, my question was how might we create a green team to get the students kind of focused on it and involved with the process? And 
and me not doing a green team on my lunches or anything. We didn't do any of the work. They did all the work. And Dayon, what did you, what was your big question? Um, my question is how can we make a sustainable school following all three, the three key points of sustainability? So you had to, you had to look at economics? Yeah, I had to look at um, the way our education system is currently and which ways we could change it in. And the, our learning styles, um, not just focusing on making our schools environmentally friendly, which is a big uh, budget, was also very important, such as ways of building our school, such as rammed earth as a way of building our actual school. And the way we actually, or the way we were taught, I felt like there could be other ways that we could be taught that would be more efficient and more helpful for our students. So one of the things that was big for me, uh, I was thinking about it, and I think Melissa too, is we usually, I feel anyways in the education system, sometimes we jump to this stage with the kids. We say, here's a project, go and uh, collect talk. some research and investigate and, and, and then create something and then present it to us all. And that's where we end up. But that's really, the kids that um, struggle with being independent learners find that process really hard to access. So how do we help them? The first thing, of course, is unpacking the content. So we front-loaded information um, to our students about what sustainability is um, and, do, if you're and the vocabulary. Genius, genius hour, you don't have to do that because you're just letting them do whatever they want. Yeah, I just, um, I just, but how many, how many people have had, you say, okay guys, pick a topic, and then you want to get into the research to do that really fast, and then three weeks later, the kid comes to you and says, I don't know what I'm doing it on yet. Right? And you're just like, we've been doing this for three weeks. You've been there, done that? I know I have. And, and, uh, my old mind, I've been there. Um, but this process helped that negate that completely. Um, yeah. So, so the first thing we did, um, using the Future Design School model, we did something called rapid brainstorming, had the kids come up with eight ideas in eight minutes. It's a really cool process. The kids kind of got a little stressed out by it because we, you start off with one minute and 30 seconds and then you get shorter and shorter and shorter. And by the end, they're furiously scrambling down their last thoughts. Um, that's independent and we did allow for some collaboration too to share some of their ideas once they had them down. So they just get a long piece of paper and you just fold it up into eights. Eight ideas in eight minutes, they scroll it down, you give everybody gets a black mark, just keep it all fine, and eight possible ideas. The first two or three might be terrible, the second two or three might be amazing, then they struggle to have any more, but it's okay, eventually they all had some. With background knowledge, they can produce eight different ideas. What I love about this process too is, how much technology do you need? You need paper and black pen, that's it. You know, and uh, for this so step. For this step, <laughs> so it's not like, we're always having to have technology in all the kids' hands all the time. Once they finished the eight minutes, then we moved on to, uh, they would pick three possible approaches and storyboard one of their ideas. So here they can do three, th one thing. Oh, sorry, are you still on that? Yeah, I just switched. Okay. They can develop an idea three different ways, or they can process that idea and start thinking, how do I, how do I want to take one of these ideas from here and grow it? And they might have to do that three times, right? And it doesn't work. And this is going to be your front look. This is going to take longer than just getting to here. But it makes this really successful. So they go, they story map. They don't put their names on it. No names on it at all. This is sort of anonymous. And then every student goes around and puts theirs up on the wall around the classroom. And they get silent heating, silent heat mapping. So each student gets 12 mini, do mini dots and they silently walk around and look at the ideas and they place um, dots on the ideas that they like the most. The large dot is the idea that they feel is really, really cool, their favorite idea. So it's a way of giving feedback to, um, to the students and with low risk. Nobody knows supposedly who the names are, I'm sure sometimes the kids share, but, um, they can go around and, and someone immediately knows whether that their idea is something everyone is on board with or maybe they need to make some changes to it. And so they look at this and no one's had to talk. So kids who are not normally willing to communicate and don't want to write feedback and can't write feedback because it's not, it's a really, and no matter what you're doing for self-assessment, peer assessment, the silent heat mapping is fabulous because you can do it with colors and say, this is on track, this is not on track. They don't have to say anything to each other and don't have to feel bad about it. 
There's no name. So they can just go around and give feedback. So what they knew, knew then, their idea was violated. They were on to something. Not just some ready research. They're on to something. And then they're like, okay, now what's, what do I have to do? So I have to restart our, then they have to really think about if they're ready to move on to the research piece. And they might have to, we call it iterations. Yeah, different. They might have to do a second iteration or realize they don't like it, they're going to go back to another idea. You've got to let them play in this pool of messiness. I like this quote by Sir Ken Robinson. I don't know if any of you have heard of him. Um, in our slideshow, we've got a TED Talk embedded in there. It's really cool. Anyway, he says, if you're not prepared to be wrong, you'll never come up with anything original. Part of one of my issues with the education system is we're training kids to never make mistakes. They're, they're almost afraid. So you get kids in grade eight constantly coming up to me with their worksheets saying, is this, am I right, am I right? They don't want to put anything down if it's wrong. Or is this good enough? Or is this good enough? And the idea is to realize, you actually learn more when you're getting something wrong. Your brain reacts more to wrong, to getting something wrong than to getting something right. Um, and you will learn more. So I always tell my kids now, if you got the most wrong answers today, you had the most learning today. If you got all your answers right today, I didn't teach you anything. So it's that idea of being okay with getting things wrong, going through this research and development, that's why it's in a sort of a circle here, um, that where they create, they question, they discuss, they investigate, collect, discuss, reinvestigate, they might have to go back and work on it again. The end product is not our goal. It's the process. Um, I had a student going through this whole process, in the end on presentation day, he had tears in his eyes and said, I can't present, I left my stuff at home. Actually, I knew from this student that probably he hadn't done a nice, pretty project. And I said, I saw you go through the process, so just tell me what you did, tell me what your idea was. He stood up in front of the class and went through his whole, like, without script, without anything, but was able to talk about sustainability, was able to talk about green building practices, was, he had it all down. And that really speaks volumes, because is the pretty product that he made what I want? The fact that he glued some things together and made a model of a school, or the fact that he can intelligently talk about sustainability and understand and recognize um, those concepts. So that was really powerful for me. And as part of the part of the where we fit in the digital literacy piece is that any possible technology, any choice, everything they can use video tape, they can be making cameras, they can make a YouTube channel, they can they can do anything with whatever this is. They can do a slideshow, they can choose to use um, edu creations to just film their process. It didn't matter. It's every anything that's available or possible that they know how to use, allow them. And then the final process would be that action and community sharing. So between our classes, we would sometimes get them to share. Um, we were lucky enough to have some people from the board come in. I know Graham Schatz came in, and Dayon got to talk to Graham Schatz at length, I know. Um, FDS came in as well, just to see what the end product was like. So that, that was really, it made it real for the kids too, that someone was going to listen to what they were saying. And uh, then we went to FDS in Toronto. We met all of the, we met the head of, uh, minister, seven Ministry of Education, head of Spec Ed, head of all the different departments between high school and kindergarten and Tracy and I and two other people sat and went through this and they're like, okay, that's what we want the high schools to start doing. We want you and the high schools both to be competing. We, how do we make this transferable? And I think that's by listening to the kids too. What was it like to learn in an inquiry classroom? And I just want to meet the kids and you please ask them some questions. Um, I found that it helped me boost my confidence while asking my teachers questions instead of, by the end of the year, instead of feeling like my teacher is my boss and like I should be like intimidated by my teacher, it's like your teacher is your friend and they're like on the same page as you are trying to help you and like they helped us with my project like all the way through, so that's really good. How did it change your thinking about things? Um, it made me like think more about the actual process. Like, as they said, instead of the final product, it was more about, like, how we're thinking instead of what we're creating. Um, I feel like it was a new learning style, and it was very helpful. And I feel like I was much more invested into the actual topics, um, I, because I feel like there's more sense of a choice there. And I feel like there's more sense of choice. I, I'm happier with what I'm doing. And right when I'm happier, I feel like I'm going to have better work with what I'm doing. 
and um, overall the project, it also lets you do things that you may want and overall I feel like uh, doing a different style of learning just really helped me in my learning. And I feel like my, uh, my all, everything I did last year, all my research and such, was much better because I was much more invested in the topic and the type of learning style. And what did you notice in the classroom as far as behavior management or community development? Did that change at all? I feel like there's many kids, maybe before they weren't the greatest students, they didn't pay as much attention. But I feel like even they at that point sort of paying more attention. They felt more interested in the topics because they felt like they had a sense of choice and they really they they really liked that and they started paying a lot more attention and you could see their grades start going up. Yeah, I think that's like the exact same in our class basically. Like when you ask them to talk with their own project, like they're using their brain like in a different way and they you start thinking about school in a different way. So we have um, a few, you know, sort of take homes how assessment possibilities. This is just one idea of how we assessed. That's the one thing that teachers I find start worrying about. Well, if they're not all writing an essay, how do I mark them on this project? Or if they're not all producing this end project, how do I assess that? So we came up with um, that one's not working. Came up with some fairly open open-ended <coughs> assessment. This is a Google form that I want to use. Yeah. Just scroll yeah. it down. It's my computer. It's her computer. <laughs> so I really like I just what did they present? Um, and then oh, this is the my actual form. Okay. I need to. Does anyone use Google Forms yet? Yeah. I'm cheated. Hey, I'm scared still. <laughs> I, I, uh, That's next year's. Easy <laughs> go. I'm I'm a Google uh, maniac. Maniac, yes, in my school. Even though I don't believe it that much. But anyway, um, and so really, is it the end product I'm worrying about or the fact that they were able to use the geographic vocabulary associated with sustainability that they were able to consider and, you know, I, I picked things that could apply to a broad spectrum of end um, results. Here's the definition. Okay. Or, or did you have another? No, that's okay. Okay. What was the other one? Oh, the other one did come up. Yeah. It just was ticking time. Yeah. So that's one way of assessing using a form or you can go with... Um, rubric and also we all know that collecting and gathering and organizing ideas vocabulary development those are all parts of things we can assess and so this form is a collaborative research collection tool for the kids who wanted to work on the same ideas so maybe they have different projects but they're collaboratively sharing their ideas and research they found with each other so here we have here's my link so the kids can go actively to the link and just check out what they've done critical thinking is this a good source how do I know but this is what they said. This is just our demo, blah, blah, blah. So this is what they said specifically. This is how I convert that into my own words. So now there's another skill that you're embedding into there. Because who knows that we don't see that process, so we miss it. And then any new vocabulary, and they can collect the link and then take it to, I mean, it just expands their thinking. And this research sheet is, is shared amongst those kids. I just think I was just going to ask that. So, like, maybe on Classroom, they all had access to that, and Google they would classroom, go in they and out of it. Yes, to yeah. on Google Class, you can do this for a whole class history thing, or you can have, um, you share a blank with every kid in the Google Classroom, and then the two kids that are collaborating on the same topic then just further share their copy. Um, so there might be three working on this, there might be one working on this, or you could have kids at another school, at a high school, what our next step is to connect with either a high school or an elementary school and co-work on some documents and things. And so that would make it really cool too to sort of hey here I found a really cool link. Um, the other part is that we also have a blog, so they have to record each week what what did they do, what was their goal, how much did they achieve, what did they achieve this week, what went well, what was the total failure, what was you know, and they can say I totally didn't focus today and I should have done this, and, and so my plan for next week is really to refocus, reestablish my goal, go back to my storyboard ask some friends what they think about this and see if I can find some new resources from um, from so-and-so in Ms. Layton's class because I know they're working on the same topic. So we're also going across classrooms and stuff. So it's like helpful and interactive in all ways. And I think we're over time. Yeah, we're, we're away from everyone else. We're, <laughs> we're over time? Oh, we do? Oh, yeah, that was only 20 minutes. I, on on this slide. Oh, it's 30. 
on this on the slideshow that I've given you, there's there's a couple of more links that you can go and look at. Um, I think I did put in a page there that we use. Not in there, but just I have a page of uh, different forms we use and different collectors of data. Uh, what I like about this, we used it with sustainability, but it, we're also using it now with our junior hour, so it can lend to to different um, different projects. Mm -hmm. Questions? Yeah, uh, can you just tell me about the um, Hedges thing with the dot? Oh, like, oh, you skipped heat map or didn't we? No, I didn't. Did oh, okay. No, you told us, but I just, I it's, didn't understand that there's these little dots. The okay, dots. so the little dots, can I just roll that? The little, every student gets 12. You can pick however many you want, depending on We give them 12. Okay. All 30, say there's 30. Or, but say there's <laughs> yeah. all yeah. around, no names. The kids walk around, they read each idea. First of all, they're, they're getting cool ideas from other kids. Yeah. They're reading other kids' work. They're reading around the room. They're doing so many things. Um, they're evaluating and assessing, and they're giving feedback all in one walk around. And no one has to say a thing. Really cool. So they put a dot on any word they think is really great, a concept that they think is great, an idea that's so it's, it's small picture first time around. Okay. It's small details that really spoke to them. Like I told them, it's like that commercial, you know, when the um, what is it called? What's that store that has all the funky stuff in it? Idea. Not idea. Oh, yeah, Pier yeah, one yeah, says. Yeah. I said, you know, in that commercial when oh, they yeah, say yeah. when something speaks to you, you buy it. Yeah. When something speaks to you on this, put a put a put a little dot on it. And so what they do then is after they've seen everybody's and they've read everybody's, now they can, that's what helps them go back and reiterate and redefine and redo their own. Because now they're like, well, that's what you meant. They're allowed, you know? they're allowed to steal ideas. They can steal ideas, Just like they can share just ideas. They can do whatever they want. So the big dot is now they're going back and they're reflecting on looking at the whole picture. They're gonna, they get one dot to give to the concept they think is most viable. And what we talk about viability being not, well, it's the best idea because it's my friends. Viability is, is it possible in my time frame this year, it might take, you know, to, to do this? Do I have enough, do the, would the teachers allow me to do this? Is there enough resources for me to do this? Would I be able to um, realistically, physically be able to do this? I have to think about the viability of this. It's not just, I like this topic, so I'm going to do research on it, and I don't care how it affects anyone. Everything we're doing has to have an impact. It's, it's all about how, how can you improve or create or do something different that's better. Okay, thanks. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. What kind of a um, time frame or like percentage of the cloud? So, realistically, for, for our geography, we did have a time frame of, I believe it was six weeks. Um, that we went through that process. When we were only doing that. Yeah, when we were only doing that. Yeah. Genius Hour is slightly different. I don't know if anyone's done Genius Hour.